Star Wars Outlaws has over a dozen unique armor sets, as well as all the purely cosmetic ones, and each set has its own strengths and weaknesses. Depending on your playstyle, you might find one of these armor sets is a better option for you than the rest. If you don't like using smoke bombs, for example, then the set that reduces their cooldown wouldn't be a good fit for you. No matter if you're just starting your first Outlaws playthrough or looking to maximize your late game build, these are the top five armor sets that you need to find to be the best space scoundrel that you can be. Oh god, that was not there one second ago. At number five, we have the Thief set. The Thief set actually has two variants, the Akiva and the Moldor sets. The Akiva set can be found on, well, Akiva in various treasure chests. Whereas the Moldor set is purchased from various vendors on Akiva as well as Tatooine. Whenever you have two sets like this, they have for the most part the same abilities, just slightly altered, as well as a new color scheme. The appeal of the Thief set is obviously stealth. All of the listed abilities here are focused on staying out of full-on combat, by avoiding detection and making use of your smoke bombs and stun shots. I love the fact that you can chain stun shot into takedown repeatedly. It really is a strong stealth combo. Since Star Wars Outlaws for the most part is a stealth game, with required sections that force you not to trigger any alarms, this set can carry you from the early game onwards. At number 4 we have the Gunslinger set. Alright, with the stealth set out of the way, let's talk about going loud. The Gunslinger set, much like the Thief set, has two variants as well. Either the Tatooine set, which you guessed it is found on Tatooine, has one part locked in their treasure chest and two that are bought from vendors, one of which will require excellent status with the huts. The second set is the Diavac set, and it's purchased from vendors on Tatooine as well as Akiva. This set is focused on Kay's Blaster. With bonuses for adrenaline gain from blasting enemies, to super cooling bonuses and increased accuracy. This set is for people who like to shoot first and live by the phrase, can't get caught if there aren't any enemies alive. The nice thing about this set bonus is that after an adrenaline rush use, you'll still have some leftover adrenaline, roughly half. So you can quickly build back to another use as quickly as possible. At number 3 we have the Crimson Rain set. The Crimson Rain set is a faction reward for maximizing your reputation with the Crimson Dawn. If you focus on this from the very start of your first playthrough, you can actually have this set before you leave the first world of Tashara. At least that's what I did when I picked them over the pikes. Seriously, does anybody even like the pikes? Much like the Thief set, this set is focused on most of the same things. Stealth, smoke bombs, but also more adrenaline which gives you an out when shit hits the fan. Remember, for faction armor sets, you do need to maintain at least a good standing or better, or else you'll lose the set bonuses. But don't worry, faction rep is easily earned back from various quests and activities. At number two, I have the Imperial Disguise set. The second faction set to make this list is the Imperial Disguise set, which you get for max reputation with the pikes. Now this is a nice well-rounded set. It's got stealth from Imperial Detection, which comes up quite frequently in the main storyline, as well as bonuses to Adrenaline, Super Cooling, Accuracy with K's Blaster, Power Module Damage, and probably most importantly, reducing the time it takes for Wanta levels to disappear. If you're like me, you've probably had a 4 or 5 star Wanta level and you're just sitting in a corner for 5 minutes waiting for the imps to just leave you alone will worry no longer. With this set, you can storm an Imperial base and leave a free outlaw. I also love that instead of just wearing like an actual Imperial outfit, K modified it to match her aesthetic. She truly is a Fashion Souls player at heart. And at number one, my favorite set in the game is the Outlaw set. This is the set that I'm actually using after 30 hours in this game. This set is for people who are adrenaline junkies, or those who have played either of the last two Splinter Cell games. Mark and Execute is the name of the game here. 
Almost everything you do will gain you adrenaline. And more importantly, your adrenaline loss over time is greatly reduced. So you aren't forced into use it or lose it scenarios all the time. The set bonus also increases damage and your health regen at full adrenaline. Meaning even though you could mark and execute some enemies, you're just as good blasting people normally thanks to the set bonus. Seriously, this is my best set right now. You have to get this. I think we're good. Where's he going? Checking the weapons. And that concludes the best sets we have in the game currently. We have two DLCs on the horizon, and hopefully some new sets with that. If you made it this far, consider subscribing, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.